general sponsors of the broadcast, Mogo, a universal credit company. T-Buy, a second generation marketplace. I'm Nina Shadian. I am a partner of Index Ventures and I also founded Hive Ventures. My name is Rev Baridian. I work for NVIDIA Corporation. My name is David Bunyatian. My name is Georgi Melkonian. My name is Yervan Zorian. I'm Artem Harutinian. I'm Karen Khachikian. I'm David Bagdasadian. I'm Gevor Karapetian. I'm Armen Sukhesian. Hello. Before we start the film, I'd like to introduce you with some facts and numbers. For example, in 2010, investments in fintech companies amounted to $9 billion. And in 2022, worldwide investments in fintech companies exceeded $200 billion. In this film, you will learn who the Armenian IT giants are. These are companies founded by Armenians. We'll talk to those Armenians who have had a huge impact in managing world-famous IT companies. We've started this documentary in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, then moved to Yerevan, and now we're summing up in Los Angeles. I promise that you're not only going to learn something new from this series, but also get motivated by the people we've interviewed to start your own IT business or get involved in the industry. Have a nice watch. I'm Pegor Papazian, the head of development at Tumo Center. My parents grew up in Iraq. They moved here before I was born. I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I went to school in Boston and I studied pre-law. I started in Yerevan in the Polytechnical University, but I definitely became a professional in the Institute of Physics. I have always been practicing computing and programming. I studied in the Polytechnical University in the Department of Transport. After that, I did my PhD in Russia and again in the field of transportation. My friend Hike and I started working on Robin at some point, And we were investing 90% of our income into the company. Then I entered the Applied Mathematics Department of the Polytechnical University and I worked at the same time in Armenian IT companies. Then I did my master's. After that, I went to the US and did my bachelor's degree once again there. I was specializing in statistics. When we tested and made it into the market, we realized that there were many empty spaces there, like big marketplaces which had faced various problems throughout the time but solved them shallowly. We decided to solve those problems ourselves. Delving into those problems, we've turned into an IT company. I was born and grew up in Yerevan. I went to a mathematical school. I graduated from the Applied Mathematics Department in the university. Then I started my career as a programmer in the 2000s. My parents urged me to go to a mathematical school. There's a world before the mathematical school and then a world after the mathematical school. I was born and grew up in Gumri. I've been living in Yerevan since I entered the university. I have more than 10 years of experience in administering systems and networks. I'm a political scientist. I have a PhD in political science. I'm specializing in informative society. I was born in Yerevan. I started in many different schools. Since school years, I've been interested in programming. Սովերեմ նյու յորքում, Քուինս Թաղամասում, սովորերեմ Մասաչուսեցի տեխնոլոգիական ինստիտուտում Բոստոնում։ I did my first steps in programming in the frames of the Olympic programming. I was born in Iran in Armenian parents. I came to the US in mid 70s when Iran and Iraqi war started. I immigrated to US uh, in 1991 and uh, started working as a graphic designer. I started in an ordinary Armenian school. Although I changed several of them, one was specialized in mathematics, I guess. So I do have some mathematical background. In my graduate school, um, when I went up to the Bay Area where we are here today, um, I landed at the heart of Silicon Valley at Stanford. And so everybody around me was um, doing technology companies, even though my background was in uh, engineering. I was born in Tehran, Iran. We moved to the U.S. when I was 13. I hold a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering degree from Oklahoma State University. Then I moved to California. For the first 10 years, I worked for a Japanese company and another startup. After that, I've been founding my own companies. I was born in Aleppo and spent all my childhood in the Middle East. I was always ready to be in technology. My parents thought the same way, so they guided me to this industry and decided to go with computers. 
I received education both in the United States and in Canada. I did my PhD in McGill University in Canada. Uh, I uh, was born in Lebanon. I studied engineering. I came to the United States in the middle of the 80s. I'm from America. I was born in Los Angeles. At a very young age, I started writing a computer program. I was six. I was born in Armenia, but for a long time, around 10 years, I lived outside of Armenia. I lived in various European countries. I can say that I received my technical education almost on my own. I've been interested in programming since I was 14. I went to the High School of Physics and Mathematics in Armenia and I was involved in scientific Olympiads in several areas, in chemistry, biology, physics and mathematics. And then I went to Moscow, received my undergraduate education there. After that, I went to the United States and I did my PhD at Cornell University. I was born in Tehran, Iran. I grew up there until I was 19 or so, and then I moved to Los Angeles in the United States. I graduated from the university here in Yerevan, the Russian-Armenian University. I started my career in the government, in fact. I worked in the Ministry of Economy. After some time, I worked in the World Bank. I used to be in the Olympics, just like our co-founder, who was our CTO. He won the Olympics in maths. Back then, I had a lot of friends, like Aram Orbelian, who won the Olympics, Aram Khachatrian, who won the Olympics in biology. And in fact, these people eventually make achievements in life. For example, Gor Vartanyan, who is the founder of Fintech and Chesifa. He's one of the outstanding people of our IT community. He won the Olympics in math. Tigran Sloyan also won the Olympics. We can conclude that if a child is trying to do something more than his school program, he probably forms a character that he has to achieve something more. And there's a secret here. That's the idea. How to get an effect like this. And as I'm from Kapan, we've decided to do it there. I remember when I was a kid and my uncle was working in electronics in the 90s, so he came to our place one day and added a remote control to our old Soviet television. And it was something fantastic for me back then. And I got interested in how it was possible, how you could change channels without touching the TV. And I started asking him questions. So I got very interested in electronics at first. And when I got acquainted with computers more closely, I got engaged with them. The first event was in London in 2014. The Tech Ranch, which is a very famous news website, organized a hackathon. We took part in it and we presented our program. We didn't win the competition, but they published an article about our project. I've been in programming for 15 years, but it's not like I was always thinking about doing business or entrepreneurship. Crisp is the first company which I co-founded. When I was a kid, I always thought that when I became a grown-up, I'd be creating some products and I'd be very rich. I think working for Seagate impacted me a lot because Seagate was a startup, a company that started from the ground. And I chose it over Synopsys as a start of my career. There were only five of us. And it was only three years after I had started my career when I was in charge of a team of 150 people. That made me think that I need something of my own. When I decided to leave the industry and go into science, I was told, how could you swap a nice and cozy office in the center of Yerevan with the Institute of Informatics in the suburbs? So I was short of some benefits, but I discovered a new world with a lot of opportunities to create new knowledge and new values with your work and your brain. You could have your own impact. Thanks to my work and grants, we built new computers for the laboratory, we had new programs and we started working with the private sector, making projects with them. Then we outgrew the local market and we started working with the American scientists. In 2020, besides business projects, we decided to do some educational programs. And we formed the Kapan Mathematical Group with three winners of the International Mathematics Competition. It's been three years that more than 120 children attend our classes. It all started for me when I was six. My father built a computer for me. Back then, it was not something common. It was 1981. Very few people in America had such a thing. But he had a feeling that it was going to be very important in the future. It was very important to me to come to Armenia. More precisely, the second time, in 1999. 
It changed my life in general. I decided that I should come to Armenia with a growing multinational company. I grew up with my mother and grandmother, and when I was a kid, me and my mom had to take care of my grandmother. She could not see and she could not move, and since then I already knew which field I wanted to dedicate myself to. I didn't know if it was entrepreneurship or technology, but I knew I had to create something to help people to take care of them, and it was Robin. Կարծում եմ առաջին տարիներին ինձ ձևավորեց հենց այն փաստը, որ գրեթե երեկ տարի լինելով ուսանող ես ստիպված եղա երկու տարի բաց թողնել, քանի որ փոխվեցին իմ կյանքի առաջնահերթությունները, նման պահերի պետք է կարողանաս ճիշտ եւ արագընտրություն կատարել։ There was an organization many years ago and I was responsible for its security. And it lost quite a big sum because of email phishing, a very big sum. And I started researching to find out how it was possible to solve that problem so that the organization domain or the organization itself was safe. At first I was trying to solve the issue manually. And the problems grew even bigger. Then I tried to use open source solutions. So I feel like entrepreneurship is always sort of been in my blood like with always my father would drill into me like you never work for anyone else you always work for yourself. So when I first left grad school the first thing I did was actually I started a consulting company. I was just like I'm not going to work for anyone else and I just hired all the people who were leaving grad school like come work for me for a little bit we'll go do interesting projects while you try to figure out what you're going to do with your life. One of the disciplines we studied in the first semester was if I'm not mistaken gaining strategic advantage to IT. And during these classes, we looked at everything from a different point of view. And we were learning that it's not just about writing codes. Okay, you've written a code, but you needed to know its implications, what it was going to become, what impact it would have. I learned it there for the first time. We were just friends at first, and Nara needed an engineer for one of her projects. I joined her to help, and that process was so much fun that we turned each of our tasks in the university into a big project. And when Nara graduated, we already had products, prototypes, many innovative things, and it all led to us deciding one day that we had enough already. We needed to get married because we spent 24 hours a day together. We had discussions day and night. We had quarrels, prototyping, then discussions again, then fights, then prototyping again. So we got married somehow. I just said to her, let's get married, and all of a sudden she said, yes. Different circumstances in my life coincided, which led me to working in entrepreneurship and technology, as well as education. The most important thing is my partnership with my wife Marilou, which allowed us to combine two different worlds of technology and education, and start a very productive journey of partnership. Being a member of an Armenian community is a useful thing all by itself in every aspect, because Armenians have created a network. It is even more effective if you're an entrepreneur or a technologist, because as you know, the Armenian diaspora is not new, it was formed thousands years ago, and it is based on networking. In Asia, in Europe, on the Silk Road, Armenians have always acted as a network, and it's a strong link. Entrepreneurs who start in Armenia are not alone. There is a huge community, very powerful, across the world that can open any door for them uh, on their journey. This is a huge opportunity. So everywhere you go, if you know how to knock the door, the door can be opened for you. All Armenians have a common thing. Even if you do not know each other, the fact that you're Armenian allows you to break the ice between people. When I was just starting my career and I visited the United States for the first time and we were anticipating some investments and sales, the fact of being an Armenian helped us a lot. Being an Armenian has helped me a lot in my technological career. And diaspora has played a huge role in my life. I think the whole work we've done with our venture fund SmartGate would have been impossible without the diaspora. We could hardly achieve half of the result if we didn't have the support from the diaspora. It is not something regulated, it is based more on individual relationships, but the fact that you're Armenian allows you to get that first meeting with another Armenian. Being an Armenian in the Silicon Valley allows you to get the support of other Armenians there, but of course it's not a ticket or a guarantee to anything. 
My whole life, I grew up uh, in the Bay Area with a perspective from my parents who would tell me, you're so lucky to be born in this country and have the right to work here and speak English and you know, you really have no excuse. At the same time, I was so proud to be Armenian that you know, anytime somebody would ask me, you know, where are you from, I would say, I'm Armenian. Being Armenian is like being at a club. Imagine a place with 300 people inside and there's only two of you Armenians and you immediately make a connection. Whenever there was a need to find connect, statistically it was possible through any other Armenian. It's not like I'm always intentionally looking for an Armenian to do that. You usually look for a way to get in touch with the person you need, but there's a good chance that first you will come across an Armenian or half Armenian who will help you. I've made a lot of acquaintances in Silicon Valley with other members of the Armenian community. And considering the number of people in our country compared with the number of people in the world, and considering how much impact we all have in the world of technology, it has always surprised me that we have quite a big impact in every sphere. I was lucky to be in California where there are a lot of Armenians, and the Armenian community helped me in many situations, even with the smallest issues possible, like going to the airport, which is quite expensive with Uber or taxi. So there's always an Armenian friend who can take you there, from such routine things up to searching for a scholarship to study. Our compatriots are spread all over the world, and they have reached quite high positions. And being a first customer, a first investor, is a huge charge for the start in the initial phases. I think right now we have an opportunity to enhance that, to offer more interesting solutions here in Armenia. One of the directions I can mention is scientific companies which can be founded here and then go outside. There is not one country in the world where I haven't met an Armenian who can help with advice, connections and acquaintances. When we received our first investment, I don't remember how many investors there were, let's say six investors, the five of which were somehow related to Armenia. It's like being a Mafia member. Wherever you meet an Armenian, it makes you be cautious and at the same time you overcome some obstacles immediately. My professional career has been built on top of the Armenian network. In fact, the first ever tech job that I got was because I was having a very casual conversation with another uh, Armenian who happened to be running a gaming studio and I only expressed my interest in learning about entrepreneurships and startups because it was just interesting to, uh, to see. Being an Armenian does help in entrepreneurship. As Armenians are spread all over the world, it makes people like me and Mari Lu, that are both from the diaspora and from Armenia, find more flexible and inventive solutions both in life and in business. We have a good community of um, te technologists. There's some I used to keep in close touch with, some I don't, unfortunately, uh, due to time constraints. But we have a small but very vibrant community. The connection between Armenia and Silicon Valley is not a natural one. It just becomes more solid thanks to the people who travel back and forth, who work here or work there and sell here. And it's very important to all of us to understand that it won't work all by itself. Because obviously, as I mentioned, there are other countries with smart people and engineers. So we have to realize that to keep this connection, and to make it better, we all have to put in much effort. It's desirable for the product-making companies to have employees who have already done it, who have worked in the product-making environment. And this experience brings to the fact that such people appear in Armenia. If we look at the history of Silicon Valley, we'll see that many big companies were founded thanks to the employees that had gained experience in other companies. They quit their old jobs to found a new company. It gives an opportunity to keep going and to replicate again and again. There's a lot of competition here. The best professionals from the world come here. They get filtered and come here. And if you're not the best in the world, you can't do anything here. You can't even live here physically, because everything is very expensive to start with. Being in the most competitive environment, you have two ways. Either you become successful or you don't and you just leave. If you're successful and you keep the connection, you can bring your experience to Armenia. 
I mean, there will be people in Armenia who will see your experience, who will have the chance to gain information about the path you have passed, who will have the opportunity to ask you to open doors for them, who will have you that have since everything bigger, that have thought bigger and worked bigger and have connections, and all that will make their development quicker. I was the one who organized the first startup Mexis in Armenia on November 3, 2011. I gave a one-day workshop training for 1 or 20 people on how to start, how to generate an idea, attract investors, get first customers, and how to relate to each other. That relationship is very important. If I look at Armenia high-tech in the um, uh, 90s versus Armenia's high-tech last 10 years, night and day, Armenia high-tech in 90s was a lot of good technical uh, skill set, weak on market access or weak in market understanding. Why is Silicon Valley so popular in the world? It's a bullshit-free environment. It's when you have a problem and you solve your problem. It's a very business-oriented approach. It's optimized for efficient processes. And it's very important to bring it to Armenia. You start understanding the demands, the market, the problem, and only after that you offer a solution. I think there has been a transition. At first we were creating a good product, and now we are creating the right product. So there's been a shift. We've learned a lot of things from Silicon Valley culture. When Armenia just got independence, it had the technological community, was now ready to work on an international level, becoming a part of the international network. So the first direction was to move from Silicon Valley to Armenia. There were some startups in 94, 95, 97 and so on. And they started developing and creating a culture of startups in Armenia. People started understanding how a company can grow fast and not slowly. Then we saw bigger companies. In the 2000s, multinational and international companies appeared, like Synopsis and others. They came to Armenia, built those small startups and developed. So a new culture appeared in Armenia. It was a new business culture of medium and large companies. It's important to notice that Yervan Zorian carries a huge responsibility for our company. We have the same way of thinking. We don't have to explain to him the essence of a problem. He knows it all very well. There's a lot of Armenians in Silicon Valley. There are Armenians from Armenia who moved there to study and to work. Spending some years there, many of them want to come back. All we need is to create jobs for them here so they can return, work here and do the same job to progress and develop our course here. I have recently opened our office for the NVIDIA company. We already have 90 employees and we like to bring people in hundreds here. When we declare that NVIDIA is here in Armenia, Armenians from all over the world got in touch with me to say they wanted to come here to work. Is there a need to become another Silicon Valley or not? I think it's way more important instead of copying someone or something, find out your own targets and work towards them. I think it is more important. We have our own targets. For example, we have a security problem which Silicon Valley has not. If we want to be like someone or copy someone's path, it's better to be Israel as their problems are very similar to ours. There are quite a big number of startups. We have more than 2,000 startups. So 3 million people, 3,000 companies, 2,000 of which are startups and dozens of multinational companies. Compared to the United States or other countries, we have quite good results. We have to move our own path, which is always harder than trying to copy something. So answering the question if Armenia can become a Silicon Valley or not, I think not. We have to make use of the situation in the world. We have to realize that we are not limited with Armenia or with the region. Today's world allows us to act globally, to cooperate globally. I think no place in the world has yet the potential to become a Silicon Valley number two, including Armenia. But Armenia has the potential to have 10 unicorn companies in the upcoming 10 years, I think. It's important to understand what Silicon Valley is. That's the point to start. Silicon Valley is not only about money or investments. It's the concentration of brain and talent which has accumulated there. Silicon Valley has become Silicon Valley because talented people from around the world have gathered there. And the venture capital was there. And they are physically there. And just imagine that in every cafe or even in an Uber, you can talk to the driver only over the fresh topics, because that's what people live with there. It's not like that here.
I think we don't need to become a Silicon Valley. We need a team. And it doesn't matter where your team is located, in Armenia, in UAE or elsewhere. I have no doubts that in the scale of our country we can have a huge impact. I'm confident that the field of technology can grow very big. I'd like that we, at least for once in our history, look at the trends not at the current moment, but think what will happen tomorrow. Because this moment is this moment, and we're not living yet in it. And this moment is passing away. Armenia is in a very interesting situation, when the US and China are in a trade war and don't sell chips or other things to each other. And Armenia is very interesting for them, both for the US and for China, because the chips made here can be sold both in the US and in China. It's better to think about our role in the international network which has started from Silicon Valley, spreading all over the world. I'm sure that there is a new trend now, which makes the world develop towards innovations. And Armenia has tried to play an important role in that network, to become a very efficient hub. Because the second Silicon Valley is not a right target. It's more important to play an impactful role in the international innovative network, and Armenia has to aim for it, as we have huge opportunities for that. Summing up the first part of our film, we can make some conclusions. The IT industry in Armenia has been developing for only a couple of decades, but currently it has gained huge speed. And a very important thing, it turns out that almost anyone can work in technology despite age, sex, initial education or location, and the support of the Armenian community gives advantage to our compatriots for making their first steps in the industry both as a startup or as an individual. In the second part of the film, we will learn the secrets of successes in IT and how big Armenia's chances are to become the second Silicon Valley. General sponsors of the broadcast T Buy, a second generation marketplace. Mogo, a universal credit company. Sano Tatsek, David. David. Հարամ մեր չարել իր վրգային պատմություն ու լրիվ մի ամիտ, բայց հիմա դավիտը չունի գործող ուշացումներ և շառունակում է ունենալ կայուն եկամութ, այդ պաճառով էլ Մոգոն դավթին դրամադրում է վար, Մոգոն ոգնում է բարելավել վրգային պատմ